Hello. We are here today to expose a scam company who got me for $32,000. But at least I got a pink golf cart out of it. So there's that. From one consumer to another, I want to start off this video by officially saying Zhenjiang Zibon Electric Vehicles Co. Ltd is a scam company and you should not buy from them. And let me tell you, they run a very convincing scam too. Like I'm not too much of a sucker, but somebody did point it out last video that I kind of am just too much of a trusting person. So I, I kind of just enter everything with the mindset that most people are good, you know, and that they won't rip me off. And it did not turn out very well in this instance for me. Um, so here we are. I'm looking at Zhenjiang Zibon Electric Vehicle Co. LTD. Um, they're Alibaba. I did find them on Alibaba, of course. And traditionally, AliExpress and Alibaba have been pretty good to me. I source some stuff from China and whatnot, and normally they're all pretty straightforward. I know last time I bought a vehicle, the electric motorcycle, they, they kind of scanned me in a sense that they sent me a lower end model, but it was the same model I ordered, just lower specs. But I figured this car would be different because they don't have any tiers. So I figured I can't really get scammed in that situation because they can't send me a lower end model. I'd just be getting sent the car. I will say that I did my due diligence. It's not like I was just like, oh look, a car, let's order one right now, you know? I'll show you all the emails in just a second, but I asked all the questions. I asked you to use payment methods that I could get money back if I needed it, like PayPal, credit card. All right, so here we are in Zhenjiang Zibon Electric Vehicles. All right, there's the car. There's the car I was supposed to get right there. I'm kind of curious what they say about it now, but anyway, that was the car. They, I mean, they advertise it, and I will say as we're scrolling through this, that this is an actual business entity. This is a legitimate business operating in China, and I had some subscribers who you know, live in China, some live part-time, some live full-time. They all did like a little background check or whatever. They couldn't find anything suspicious. And once the process started, once I got the bill of lading and all that kind of stuff, the paperwork looked legit. Everything, literally everything looked legit, which is why I was so heartbroken, you know, last video when I got the car and it was a pink golf cart. And yeah, I know for the price, everyone, a lot of people last video were saying for the price, it was, you know, too good to be true. Like you should have known it was a scam instantly or whatever. But manufacturing, you guys are looking at like the actual retail value, what they're sold for. And yeah, they sell for about 100,000. They sell for about 85 or 90,000 in China. Um, but manufacturing, they have, because Alibaba is buying from manufacturers. That's basically what it is. I was buying it for the manufacturer's price and they'd still make some money on it because it wouldn't cost them that much to make it. Really, it all looked legit. Um, so it's not like I was some sucker and I just pushed like, you know, order now and then paid all the money and then, oh man, I got scammed. Oh my gosh. It's like, I literally spent nights, sleepless nights, just like I did the first time buying the bike. I was like every rabbit hole about this car and this company that I could go down, I did and everything checked out. And so it was a very, very convincing scam. And as you can see, I'm just going through here. You can see they actually have a storefront. This is, I'll, I'll go back, I'm, you, you guys probably missed it. And so here it is, Zhenjiang Zibon Electric Vehicles Co. So they have a legit storefront, they have like a little showroom, it's a small little thing, but even so, I mean, they're a legitimate business. In China, I will say, again, don't buy from these people, they scam me big time. Lots and lots of cars to look at, so they're a legitimate thing, it's just that shipping overseas sight unseen, do not ever do that, because they will scam you. This is definitely a business that doesn't practice good business ethics. They uh, are just out to make a buck. And uh, unless you're in person buying it in cash, I'm sure they would send you the cheapest thing possible, however much money you paid. So that being said, that's their storefront. I'm gonna go over here to the listing that I found to buy this thing from. And this is what I was looking at when I was like, cause I wanted to do this series all along. I wanted to do this series, like getting an electric car cause I have always loved cars and particularly electric cars. I freaking love them, exotic cars. Like I have models of them, you know, I, I just freaking love cars. And so when I saw this thing, which is electric sport car, you know, good specs, it's similar specs to a Tesla, maybe a tad bit slower. Um, but again, for the price, that makes sense, right? It's a little bit slower. So it's not quite at the 40, you know, $50,000 range of a Tesla, but getting this car for 30,000 made sense. And it was from China, so it'd be a really good series on YouTube. I know people would like to see that kind of stuff. So there's, you know, specs right here, like all the Alibaba posts have um, lots and lots of photos. This is the exact car that I was looking at. This is the same one he sent me specs for in an email. And a lot of people mentioned that there's usually like this whole post here. And then if it's a scam post, they have like the actual car you get at the very bottom. So people won't scroll to it, but in the event that they you know, try to get their money back. They're like, oh, well we sold you this one. It's on the same listing.
But as you guys can see here, there is no other car on this page. There's just some other you know, links at the bottom, but all the specs for it are right here. It's all for the um, Keontu K50. And so again, this all looked legit, you know? And because I've ordered a lot of stuff on China and always got a product that's at least very similar to the one I ordered, I was like, there's no way for the money I'm paying that these people would actually not send this card to me, but they did. So this is the first like legit scam that I am just angry. I'll just say angry. I'm kind of livid about the whole situation. And this is a bad reminder. I'm, I'm not enjoying doing this at all because man, I really wanted that car. 25,000 to 55,000 is the price because they're not the manufacturer either. They're selling it, you know, as a rebranded car. They called it the super deer the whole time. And so I was like, okay, it's just a, you know, it's just a rebranded Keontu K50, right? And I asked him that several times. He's like, oh yes, even in the contract, he put K50 on there. So I was like, all right, it's just a rebranded K50 straight from the manufacturer. They'll just ship it to me, whatever. But my point here is I hope you guys get the sense that it feels legit. You know, it feels like a legit thing. People looked into it for me. They said it's a legitimate business. Paperwork all looks good. Contract looks good. The listing lines up, the car, the pictures they sent me, the videos they sent me, the specs they sent me, everything lined up. And for the price of the manufacturer, just making the car and shipping it directly to consumer, it all makes sense. So anyway, that's that. Let me get into the emails. I know I'm kind of killing time here. So as you guys can see, and, and I might blur out a couple things just so, you know, addresses, that kind of stuff, just because I don't want that floating around on YouTube everywhere. Anyway, so here's the email threads that I had with him, like, I don't know, 10, 12 or whatever email threads that I had with him and over 200 emails. Um, so it was not a short process. So I sent the inquiry from Alibaba and it gave me an auto response here. Um, it says, we'll love to start business with you, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He sent me a catalog, which had um, the Super Deer or the Keontu K50, which is clearly says Keontu K50 in the listing on the photos and everything. All the specs for it. And then it has a bunch of other miscellaneous cars with the specs. So then he sent me the prices, you know, of the car. And then the Super Deer, he said, is $29,860 per car. So basically $30,000. So I was like, how much does it cost to ship? And at this point, I asked the hard-hitting questions. Am I able to register this in the United States? Does it come with the proper paperwork? He said, yes, it comes with DOT. What and what is legal in USA? And I asked, of course, since it's a Chinese car, is the interface in English and US standard measurement system, miles per hour, um, temperatures, etc. And lastly, the type of charging port. So I asked all these questions. And then I said, of course, I hi, I'd like to know more before buying it. Can you send me photos? Can you send blah, blah, blah? He says, oh yeah, of course, here's all the photos. And I was like, oh, cool, photos. And then I said, also, do you have video of it driving? Of course, I wanna see videos of this thing. I wanna make sure it is well put together, you know, like not a really crappy car, because 30,000 is not a small amount of money. And then he sent me these videos just of it driving. I'm not gonna bore you guys to death with it, but just videos like that driving. It was super cool, and, and you can hear him talking in the background about the Super Deer. So anyway, and that at that point, it was all seeming so legit that I was actually starting to get a little bit excited about it, and I started telling my wife about it and whatever, that you know it would be a good YouTube series. People will really like to see this. And because I'm not rich, I told him, at the time, it was like January at this point or something. It was back in December when I was doing this. It was a long time ago. I told him that <laughs> we're gonna need to wait a couple months. I can't just shell out 30 grand right now because it was a lot and we didn't have that much right now. And uh, so I said, funding change, blah, blah, blah. He said, let us do this, sir. You can pay us 5,000 now and we wanna start business with you while we have government support. And then when you get your car, you pay the balance. I was like, Hey, that actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> and it's nothing that's uncommon. You guys might be like, oh, that should have been a red flag, but it's actually not that uncommon when you're doing business transactions, especially with big, big purchases and stuff, to do a net 60, net 30, which basically means that you receive the product and then you have 30 or 60 days to pay off the balance. And so it's not uncommon. And here you can see, said after you get the car, um, you can even sell the car within 60 days after you get the sample car and then you must pay the balance. We confirm, we can make it in this color, whatever. Then here he confirms that everything will be as I need it in the US, perfect, blah, blah, blah. Then I ask before we start the order to confirm the specs of the car because I need to see a spec sheet 
I need to see the correct photos. I need to see all this stuff making sense before I actually pull the trigger on this. Here's the spec sheet he gave me. Super dear, K50 specifications is clearly a Keanu K50. And so here it is. And you guys will notice too, there's no other pictures on this whole thing but the Keontu K50. And so the car that I was buying was a Keontu K50. It was nothing else. They could not have been anything else. So then we got it all started and here is the invoice. Zenjang Zbon Electric Vehicle Close Code LTD. There's the telephone number and their address. Proforma invoice sold to the buyer. And this is very standard. This is a very standard contract. Same, same kind of thing with any other supplier you have when you make a contract. Then his bank account information and then marks and numbers. This is what the order was. It was a K50 electric sport car. One unit, $29,000. So by all means, I should have gotten a K50, which I assume is a Keontu K50. <laughs> I would like to pay with credit card if possible. Is this an option perhaps through Alibaba because they have trade assurance and the credit card has chargeback if I need it. He says, hi, sir. We do not accept credit card payment from outside China and we never operate like this before. Please only send telewire transfer to our bank account on the invoice. Uh, we do not do Alibaba as too much complicated processes and fees to get funds from Alibaba. That actually is also kind of standard. Chinese companies don't like to go through Alibaba because they do cut a, a fee. So if they can just jump off of Alibaba really quick and then get payments that way, they save that fee. And then here I am asking, do you accept payment through PayPal? I would like to avoid wiring the money for the car I have not seen yet. PayPal and credit card are great options for the $5,000 deposit for the car so I can confirm receipt and the car is as described. The last 24,000 I will wire when I receive the car and confirm as described. Anyway, then I stopped hearing back from him for a tad. Then I sent him the confirmation of the wire transfer going through, as you boys can see here. 5,050 for the international wire. And as you guys can see here, it's $5,000 to the recipient, which was the deposit I paid him, plus a $50 international wire transfer fee. There you go, proof I'm actually paying this amount of money. <laughs> anyway, then I asked him a bunch of follow-up questions, like, you know, like it comes with a charger, right? Like all the things that I needed. Then anyway, then coronavirus hit, and it hit in China first, by the way. So they shut down a little earlier than we did. So it was like February 17th at that point. And he said, dear sir, we will update you ASEP as China is facing serious problem for con virus. Then I said, I understand, stay safe, blah, blah, blah. And then didn't hear from him for a month and some. March, I emailed. Week after that, I emailed again. And then here it comes. We are back to work now and working on delivery of our car. But the problem now is the government has stopped financial subsidiary for the cars exporting. Thus, we have to invest another 9000 on the project. But we kindly ask you just to cover 2000 But at this point, I had some kind of a trust in the company because everything checked out. They were established business, blah, blah, blah. So I had some kind of a trust with them. So I did wire that $2,000. And then I asked for photos. If you could send photos of the car once completed both of the blue exterior and black interior before shipment and the center gauge and center screen to confirm the language is in English. Then I emailed again. Next week I emailed again. The next week I emailed again. The next week I emailed again. Not responding. And then finally, like a month later in May, he followed it up, we are making an arrangement. You hear from me very soon. So anyway, then at that point it was June and the shipment was actually like going to be happening soon. He actually sent me the ISF information that I needed. Um, he expected me to file it, which wasn't a big deal, but I didn't know that. So I had to pay the filing fee for that. Here is the ISF information he gave me by the way. Um, but it also gave me the chance to check the shipment because while I was on the phone with um, Customs and Border Protection, you can actually ask them to check the container number and see what's in it and whatnot. And so I asked him, what's in the container? And they said, yeah, it's an electric car. There's an electric car on the boat. Here's the bill of lading, by the way. And on this bill of lading, you guys can see there is an electric car with its description, whatever, but the weight of the car was the same weight of the specs that he sent me for the Keontu K50. So at this point, I was actually starting to get excited. Before this point, I was always holding off just a little bit uh, my excitement just because I knew that there could be something that goes wrong. It could be a scam, you know, maybe this or maybe that. And so I wasn't getting excited yet and just being as level-headed as I could be to make sure this was all on track to, you know, be what it should be. <laughs> but when I saw the gross weight, which is like 3,700 pounds, what the Keontu K50 should weigh, and then the measurement of the package, what the Keontu K50 should be, I was actually starting to get excited because it was like, I'm actually gonna be getting a Keontu K50. That's awesome. At this point, there was a huge miscommunication because there, his broken English is very different than actual English. 
Um, so his broken English, delivery to him meant deliver to the ship. Because basically when his company is shipping something overseas, it's checked as delivered when they give it to the ship because then it leaves and the business is concluded at that point. Whereas how he described it in his broken English for the whole thread was basically delivered to my address is delivery. So in my mind, I was thinking delivery to my address um, is what he meant. And then I'd inspect the car and then pay him the, you know, the next $24,000 within 60 days of that time after having seen the product. But delivery to him meant to the ship. And so they put it on the ship and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he's like, how are you? Please kindly find that the attached copy of the bill of lading for your reference. We are waiting for the USD $24,000 to be paid today uh, you know, to the below bank account so we can have the original bill of lading released to you. And so that was a huge surprise because at that time we were buying this new crib and we were excited about that, but it was gonna, you know, take most of our money. And so when he emailed this, that we need $24,000 right now, it completely took me by surprise and we were closing on this house the next day, literally the next day. Um, so we had to have like 20 some thousand dollars more for this house. And so we were not expecting to all of a sudden need $20,000, $24,000 more for this car immediately. And you guys will see here, this is when it started getting sketchy and I was getting like, what the frick? Are you serious? We said transfer $24,000 immediately. We're still waiting for transfer copy of the USD $24,000. Why don't you reply anymore? Blah, blah, blah. And this was like literally 10 minutes increments that he was, he didn't reply for weeks at a time. And then all of a sudden he emails once, waits 10 minutes, why are you not replying? <laughs> and then I was like, as agreed upon, I will pay the balance when I receive the product. The bill of lading does not require my full payment for it. Normally the bill of lading and freight release only cost a few hundred dollars. I provided an extra $2,000 before, which should cover all that. You know, why are you changing the agreement as discussed only a day ago? And he said, our new agreement is that once we deliver the car, the balance be paid immediately, blah, blah, blah. And keep in mind, delivered to him means on the boat. Deliver to me was to my address. They said, do not play with us. If you do not transfer us the balance now, we immediately ask the shipper to change the consignee and we sell the car to others in the US. We need your urgently reply immediately. I said, I'm not playing with you. We had a contract and a verbal agreement that I pay the balance upon receiving the car. <laughs> Why are you threatening me now after I followed all instructions? Then I forwarded him the contract that we had, which clearly states, let me pull it up again, term of payment, USD $5,000 paid in advance and balance will be paid within 60 days after, I'm assuming that means, the buyer get the car and register the car on the road. That's clearly meaning I get the car and I register it on the road and I'm driving it. And then I said, why no reply? I was just being a little snarky in his broken English so he'd understand. Why no reply? I have 10,000 in my account currently, blah, blah, and, and again, I was shifting funds like a mofo. And he said, just give us $15,000 and then 7,000 when you actually receive the car. I was like, okay, great. So I scraped together all our money, gave him that $15,000, sent him the confirmation of it, of the wire transfer. And he comes back the very next day and he says, by the way, we try to get the release of original bill of lading to you immediately after we get your payment, but our financial department stop it and insist on you to pay the full balance amount, which is $7,000 left to get the release documents to you, blah, blah, blah. So when we get the payment, we will release the original documents to you. Again, changing what we had just agreed upon last night. And he says, sorry, financial department stopped this and insist on this. They are stupid guys. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Classy. Um, let me show you guys, before I get too far ahead, let me show you guys the wire transfers just because the haters, before you start co typing your comments. All right, here it is. Zhenjiang Zebon Electric Vehicles. Amount, $15,000. Okay, so then here's the $7,000 one. You guys can see your recipient is Zhang Jiang Zibon, blah, blah, blah. So there it is. You guys know that I'm paying this money and it was not easy to do. I had to pull a lot of strings to get even, to have this much money. Anyway, so then the shipment was on the boat. It was headed my way. I was tracking it on the live ship tracking map. So I was tracking the shipment and I was emailing him and emailing him because I needed information. Most importantly, I needed the VIN number for the for the car because I needed to file the HS7 form, which is like, you know, what you're importing. If it's a vehicle, you need to tell customs basically what you're importing and why you're importing it and if it abides by the rules of importing it. Then he finally got back to me with a probably made up VIN number, 
but it was a VIN number nonetheless, and I just took it on faith that it was correct, which it was not, clearly. He had told me that it's able to be registered in the US, no problem, comes with the paperwork, blah, blah. So I asked him, confirm please that the vehicle is DOT approved. Just send me the paperwork, certification, that's all I need, I'll be out of your hair. Never got a reply from that either. And then he asked for that last $2,000. So then I make the last $2,000 payment, and I asked, do, you need, do I need to do anything else from here? Are you guys handling the rest from here? Do I need to hire a customs broker, or, your, or is your shipping company doing it for me. And he said, we will handle all the rest and no need you broker. Thanks, Tony. And I was like, frick yeah, I'm getting the Kion 2K50 to my address. He said he's gonna ship it and everything. And at this point, I was tracking the boat. You can, you can just pull it up on Google, just search the boat name and whatever. It pulls it up, a live map to track boats and whatnot. So I was tracking it. One morning, I log in like three weeks after it was, once it starts going across the ocean, you'll lose it for a little bit unless you have a paid account with those websites and whatnot. But so I stopped checking it as frequently once it got into the middle of the ocean because I couldn't see where it was anyway. So anyway, I wake up one morning, check the shipment, and it's in freaking San Francisco. It was supposed to go to LA from China and then wherever else. And so then I was like, what the frick? It's headed back to Tokyo from San Francisco? And then I checked. It had been in LA five days before then. Like I didn't check it as maybe as often as I should have, but it had been in LA for five days. And he stopped replying. After he got that $2,000 from me, he stopped replying completely. So then there's that. So then I was like, are you serious? Oh, another thing, the arrival notice. Um, so basically when you're shipping something like this, they give you the bill of lading when it's loaded onto the boat. And then when the ship is about to come into port to drop it off five days or so before that, they send you an arrival notice so you can get everything worked out with customs, make sure it all goes through easily. I never got the arrival notice because he gave the shipper false information for me. The email for me wasn't even right, nothing was right. So I didn't even know that it had been sitting in the warehouse for like five days already. I only knew that because I messaged everybody like, where the frick is the package? This guy's not getting back to me. And someone finally got back to me that's where the video started, that first video you guys watched, that's where it started. You know, let the nightmares begin. Headed down to LA to get this car that had been sitting there for almost a week at this point. Um, so then you guys know the story from there. But then I emailed him that night, I was shipped the wrong car, you have to explain and resolve this immediately. He didn't reply to that, of course. Then I said, did you scam me intentionally? I asked him that because there were actual things that could have happened. The bill of lading, they take the weight and the dimensions of the package before it gets put on the ship. And the weight and the measurement of the, of the car, the Kion 2K50, what I thought it was, actually matched the Kion 2K50. So I was kind of excited at that point. But the arrival notice said that it was way lighter, said the package was like two thirds of the of the size, like not anywhere near as big. So it could have been, you know, a third party who was shipping the thing, switched out the packages and took it for themselves. Lots of things could have happened. So I wanted to make sure that it was an intentional scam and that this wasn't actually like some form of a mistake. He said, sorry, we did not notice that. We will ship a new one this month. Very sorry, sir. <laughs> like, how do you not notice that you shipped somebody who bought like the top car that you sell <laughs> he shipped them a pink golf cart. I don't know how you don't notice that, but. So anyway, then he follows that up with, we also urgently ask you to stop the recall of the $2,000 payment. <laughs> Cause I had just made the $2,000 payment the week before and they don't transfer on weekends. So it was still transferring to him through his bank. And so I called my bank immediately. and was like, hey man, I just got scammed. Uh, I need to put a claim on that money to get it back. And so they put a hold on that payment and that's the only reason why he even responded. He was like, please just release the hold and we'll make it all right. Uh-huh. Anyway, then he got the payment. How it works with international wire transfers is when you make the transfer, it takes like three days for your bank to process and then they send it to his bank and it takes his bank a couple more days before they actually send him the payment. And so at this point, his bank had the money and it was up to them whether they send it back to me or send it to their recipient. As a Chinese bank, what do you expect them to do? They send it straight to him. And I haven't heard back since. I don't expect to either. That's just the nature of scam companies. They just get as much money as they possibly can and then they just stop replying and uh, hope, hope nothing happens. So anyway, that is all the electronic correspondence that I had with him. Uh, so far at least. <laughs> and I also got the comment last video, like if, it, if this isn't fake, why didn't you just leave it boxed? And so like you could send it back and get your money back. <laughs> Cause like that's literally not how it works. But you guys got me, you guys got me there. Whew. That's a fake video, it's a fake video for sure. 
<laughs> Let me guarantee you right now, it's definitely real. And it really sucks. It really, really sucks to be me because I'm out $32,000. I got 8,000 back in customs, luckily. Um, the company I was working with was just a lifesaver. They were amazing. But it still, do it still doesn't feel good when people are like, this is so fake. Like this, this is, it's just he's doing this for views. Like he didn't even order that other car or whatever. I just kind of wish that people would have a little bit more grace with people online. Like not everybody is a bad person online and not everybody just lies for views and YouTube money and whatever. My channel does not cover this. You know, $32,000 is what I'm out. I literally can't get that back or, you know, I. I hope I can, but I, I'm not expecting to, you know? But yeah, I think I'm pretty much over the Chinese market. I They just don't have good business ethics. So I'm kind of just not in the mood to ever do business with them again, except for the essentials, of course. But, so I think I'm gonna start branching out into more respectful, more respectable markets. See what else is out there. I'm kind of tired of China. <laughs> I really am. So right now I'm up in the air like what to do because um, it literally happened only like a week and a half ago. So I'm still in the process of how can I get money back and whatnot. We do have big plans for it though. I mean, we're gonna make something fun out of it. It just, it, it really does just suck being out that much money and having a pink golf cart to show for it. So I hope this video was pretty informative for you guys and, and I just want you to know not to buy from these people because they run a very good convincing scam operation. So that's that. I already know this video is way too freaking long, so I'll cut it here. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.